So welcome to EBPREX new member orientation. We do this every first and third Tuesday online. Um, yeah, thanks so much for being here. A brief agenda for what we're gonna talk about today, our mission and vision, then understanding cooperatives in general um, and understanding the EBPREC cooperative in particular. Uh, then I'm gonna give a brief overview of our projects to date um, and talk about what it is to be an EBPREC member and how membership works. And then we're just, we're gonna wrap it up there and throughout, feel free to uh, type questions in the chat or just unmute yourself and interrupt me with questions, but we'll also pause throughout. So, um, Oh, and just to check in before we get started, you know, EBPRIC isn't at the point where we can offer urgent housing assistance right now. Um, but one resource for folks, if, if you are interested in urgent housing assistance, uh, you can check out 211. Um, and we also are developing a program in Deep East Oakland to support folks with various resources outside of EBPREC. Um, so you can email our team there at here to stay at ebprec.org. Um, and we always want to, you know, share an acknowledgement that we are on occupied Ohlone territory. Uh, one of our partners that we like to support and plug is the Segorte Land Trust. They actually appoint a board member to EBPREX board, um, and they have a Shumi land tax, which is a way that you can actually contribute financially on an annual basis to support their work. Um, yeah. Um, so this is me. My name is Ojan. I'm the finance director at East Bay Prec. I helped launch the organization back in 2018 uh, before. And I joined in 2017 when we were all just volunteers. Um, this is a silly picture from our staff retreat this past December. And this is our mission. Um, it's kind of a mission and vision statement combined into one, which is why it's so long. Uh, but it's basically to facilitate BIPOC and allied communities to cooperatively organize, finance, purchase, occupy, and steward properties, taking them permanently off the speculative market, creating community controlled assets and empowering communities to cooperatively lead a just transition from an extractive capitalist system into one where communities are ecologically, emotionally, spiritually, culturally, and economically restorative and regenerative. So it's sort of you know, all encompassing in a lot of ways, but really recognizing that real estate and land is at the center of, of a lot of this work um, and can enable and empower communities to do all this kind of transformation. We have three mission pillars that really guide how we, how we do our work. Uh, first, land without landlords. We see housing as a human right, not as a commodity. So we don't commodify our spaces as much as we can within this capitalist system. Um, we also believe in restorative economics. So transforming an unjust finance system into one that works for everybody and can actually help redistribute the resources. Um, and finally, heal people power. Um, we really cultivate capacity within our membership and our staff and our residents um, for nonviolent collective governance and short circuiting this, these loaned colonial power dynamics. Um, so I really believe in re-empowering ourselves um, through Skillshare and other, other means. Um, and we also have points of unity. This is a condensed version, believe it or not, um, the full versions on our bylaws, but these are sort of guiding principles that help us make our decisions. And uh, these are points that everybody, when you join an e as an EBPREC member, you are signing on to these points of unity in the way that you show up to the cooperative as well. So we stand for the healing and liberation of all people and lands. We move at the pace of community, not capital. That could be a tricky one in real estate in the Bay Area where things move so quickly. Uh, we build trust and safe spaces with each other. We're people of color centered. We believe restorative solutions are rooted in collective land stewardship and collective decision making. We want a East Bay that's affordable to all. We reject the speculative market as a profit-making strategy, and we prioritize people of, at greater risk of displacement over people of greater means. Um, and again, these are guiding principles. We can't necessarily you know, show how each of these items show up in every decision we make, uh, but if we're having trouble you know, deciding something and feeling at a moral quandary with some of these issues, we can use these to, to guide our decision-making. So a little bit about EBPREC story. Um, we are a truly grassroots organization. Um, we started when the People of Color Sustainable Housing Network, POTION on the right side here, they're, they're a group of folks in the East Bay that emerged uh, years ago. They started a listserv, started a Facebook group, just trying to help each other find sustainable housing, right? Uh, mostly in, in the rental market. But at some point they decided that, you know, they were so cool. They wanted to create some entities so they could actually buy a property together. So they went, to the Sustainable Economies Law Center, some of their members pictured here on the left, um, 
and they were asking, how can we create an LLC to, to buy some housing together? And the law center had been cultivating this idea of a permanent real estate cooperative. And they asked Potion, hey, are you interested in talking about maybe doing this as a cooperative instead of LLC? That launched a, a series of meetings that lasted for a couple of years um, until 2018 when it coalesced and the cooperative finally launched. And that is how EB Prec came about. Now, a lot of people come to this space knowing about, you know, affordable housing, nonprofits. And so the PREC is a little different. So you created this, uh, this chart to sort of show the difference between a community land trust, the CLT, and a PREC, and sort of a capitalist, um, you know, business as usual type model on the right side. So I'm just going to go through and talk about some of the differences and similarities, um, just to help ground folks in like, what is a PREC and how is it different than other models? Um, in terms of legal structure, CLTs are typically 501c3 nonprofits, whereas the PREC is actually a California cooperative corporation, um, which is not a for-profit company, but it's not a nonprofit. We're, we're, we're what's called a not-for-profit, which is this weird middle area legally, um, but we're a cooperative corporation, uh, which means that all of our members actually get a vote in the cooperative as opposed to a legal structure of a 501c3 where you're governed by a board who is uh, in charge of you know, how, the, how the organization runs. In terms of duration, um, both CLTs and PREX uh, aim for perpetual affordability um, in our properties. Uh, income levels, CLTs typically focus on low income folks or typically only work with low income folks uh, because of the government funding that comes in uh, to fund those projects. Um, whereas EBPREC, while we're also focused on you know, low income folks, we are able to do more mixed income projects because most of our projects are not government funded and therefore are only restricted by uh, in our internal decision making. And sometimes having a mixed income project can actually help internally subsidize low income with some higher income folks within a, a project. Um, in terms of org governance, like I mentioned before, CLTs are governed by their boards, um, whereas EBPREC at the most basic level, we're governed by our membership. We have at minimum an annual membership meeting where all of our members can vote and they can bring things to that meeting as well. Um, and so that's the organization. In terms of the pro each property, CLTs, it really varies. Some of them, uh, there's individual ownership of, EB, of CLT properties. Some of them are just rentals where the residents don't participate in governance. And some of them are cooperatives. Um, at EB Prec, we have resident co-ownership, which basically means there is a, um, a staff steward, a staff liaison, if you will, who works with those residents to collectively manage their own property. Um, decisions that pertain just to that property, residents are empowered to make. Decisions that impact the cooperative at large, we make together. Um, but they always have a staff person there as a, as a point of contact to support because a lot of our community members don't uh, aren't like asset managers, aren't property managers, have never been homeowners before. So um, we're here to make sure that our properties are maintained well and people you know, have support to develop their systems. In terms of fundings, CLTs um, use loans, grants, and subsidies typically. Uh, EBPREC uses the same, but we also sell shares. So as I'll talk about later, um, people can buy shares in the cooperative and that's how we raise a lot of our money. We didn't start with an endowment or a, you know, a, a seed funding. So that's where, where we're getting our equity from. Um, and in terms of wealth building, CLTs, it can vary. Sometimes there's no equity building for residents or sometimes there's limited equity building. EV Prec, we offer all of our residents the opportunity for limited equity building. Um, and per our points of unity, it's not based on the speculative market. It's really limited um, so that the properties can stay affordable. Um, and at the same time, making sure that we're actually building collective wealth through the cooperative as opposed to focusing on individual wealth for those just for those residents. So that's a little bit of a comparison between these two models. Um, but what is a cooperative anyways, right? There's cooperative is a lot of different things. This is there's this metaphor where if you imagine closing your eyes and touching an elephant, different people will touch different parts of the elephant and you won't know what it is, right? So that's what this this little cartoon here is depicting. And cooperatives similarly have a lot of different aspects that you could touch on um, and they're not always the same thing right so cooperative can be a tax category it can be a type of corporation it can be a process where you're democratic and distribute profits based on patronage it could be a process that adheres to the Rochdale principles but technically a cooperative could be all or none of these things so I'm going to give some examples of different cooperatives and uh, then talk about what AB Prec is 
Um, so bringing this to the real world, um, REI is a cooperative that a lot of people are members of, and they're what's called a consumer cooperative, where in order to be a member of REI, you just shop there, right? You join, you become a member, you're actually a co-owner of the cooperative, and you get a little uh, dividend at the end of the year, right? You get your $25 gift card. They say, thanks for shopping REI. You, you can use this you know, discount at your next purchase. Um, so that's a cooperative where all the consumers become members. There's also producer cooperatives. Um, Tonka Bar is one where it's used in agriculture all the producers who are, are raising buffalo on their farms, they come together, they pool their harvest each year and they sell it to somebody to process and turn it into these, these Tonka bars. Um, there's also worker cooperatives and there's really like, for our, for our purposes, there's two types of worker cooperatives, uh, worker owned and worker governed. So Ayers Mendy is a business, a bakery here in Oakland um, that is a worker owned cooperative. Um, all of the workers can become owners and they get some sort of profit sharing from it. Um, the Sustainable Economies Law Center, on the other hand, they're a nonprofit, right? So nobody owns the Sustainable Economies Law Center, but they are governed collectively by their workers. Um, so they're a worker governed cooperative. I think there's many might also be on some level worker governed as well as worker owned. Uh, but when you talk about a worker cooperative, it could mean, you know, uh, that it's owned, but you could have a worker owned cooperative where they're still structured hierarchically. So there is a, a difference between those two things. Um, you've got investment cooperatives like Boston Ujima Project or New York Real Estate Investment Cooperative where people will pool their money and then collectively decide where to invest it. Um, so those are the four main types of cooperatives uh, as I see them. And then we've got multi-stakeholder cooperatives. EVPREC is a multi-stakeholder cooperative, which basically means we have multiple different types of members who fall into these various categories. Um, so here you can see these in red on the right are the different types of ownership at EVPREC. We have community, sorry, we have resident and community owners who are sort of consumer cooperative model owners where they're consuming programming or housing from the organization. We have our staff owners who are co-owners and also collectively govern ourselves. And then we have investor owners who invest some money um, and on some level help, you know, actually they don't really help decide where exactly to put it. The investor owners have the least amount of power in our organization. Um, so that's how EVPREC shows up as a cooperative. And we'll talk a little bit more about each member type um, in a little bit. So I'll pause there and see if there's any questions. No, you're doing a great job. Very informative. <laughs> I feel like a co-op uh, professional already. <laughs> Beautiful. I love it. All right. Let's keep it going then. Um, Okay, so next we're going to talk about our projects. Sorry, I need to update the slide show here because it plays better when I show it through YouTube. So um, here's a quick video about one of our first projects. motivated by EV Prec and just inspired for a long time. And I think it's incredible the type of movement that they're building and the fact that you can be involved as a community member or as an investor. A thousand bucks to be able to park that into this amazing community project that's going to help people live in secured permanent housing like you can't add, I, I couldn't think of a better place to to invest my money i contacted the east bay permanent real estate cooperative and i said hey i don't really understand what you guys do but maybe you'd be interested in helping us out to figure out how we could buy the building and they literally <laughs> figured out how we could buy the building they got the loans together we met up with our landlords. We drove all the way to Gilroy, where our landlord is, and met with him and tried to convince him to sell the building to us. And then he did. And so now we get to live here forever. Living in a space where your housing isn't secured just makes everything so much more difficult and just so much more empowering to be able to cooperatively own a property. What I'm most excited about is the dismantling of this current structure, this current capitalist structure, and creating opportunities for our people to return to our 
native state, so to speak, where we are clear about the fact that we're able to do for self. We don't need to ask for anything. We don't need to rely on anyone else for anything. We're here. We've been doing it. We continue doing it. And we can do it in a cooperative way that supports our values and our mission. We don't need permission for that. Evie Preck is moving in that way, and I support that. Yeah, so that was um, a video from our close of escrow party at 789. Um, love that last uh, last bit from Cisnati is so great. Um, so as I mentioned, this was our first uh, project back in 20, started in 2017. We closed in 2018, partnership with the Northern California Land Trust. Um, and we're currently working with the city to like sort of complete the transition. We're, we got a second subsidy from the city um, that we're working just to complete the paperwork on and eventually hopefully transfer this property from the Northern California Land Trust to EB Prec for to make it truly like resident owned uh, with these residents. So yeah, super grateful for all their labor and, and the collective vision that went into this project. Um, our second project was Prince Street. This is in South Berkeley where a homeowner, Carolyn here actually decided to donate her property to the cooperative. Um, and so she, she'd been living there for the last 50 years. She raised her three kids there and her husband passed away and she realized like, okay, I've got this property that I bought for like $30,000 and is now worth over a million dollars. I don't need this to go to the highest bidder and then you know, have my kids get some inheritance. They already got their inheritance. So she decided to donate it. Um, and it's become a project for um, women artists uh, working in the community. There's a dance studio in the back. Um, and we, um, yeah, it's it's just been such a incredible opportunity to like take this single family home in like a, you know, affluent neighborhood in Berkeley and make it available to low income artists of color to, um, to create there and have this peaceful sanctuary and garden and this amazing space. So that was our second project, um, which is very different than our third project here, um, which I've got another video to give a little intro to. That's what I, that's what I, okay, so I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. Ready? Give it back, Quiddle! Hello. I am Noni Session. I'm a third generation West Oaklander and one of the founding staff members and executive director of the East Bay Permanent Real Estate Cooperative. Today, we are at Liberation Park um, for the East Bay Permanent Real Estate Cooperative third annual member meeting. This year, it's an open member meeting and a land liberation celebration, celebrating our historic acquisition of the Estes Orbit Room along the 7th Street Corridor in West Oakland. The East Bay Permanent Real Estate Cooperative, as a Black and people of color-led, multi-stakeholder co-op, knows that there is no shortage of vision in our community. What there is a shortage of is resources, and in fact, non-extractive resources. So we galvanize uh, low interest and um, um, non-extractive investment. We help build out land and housing real estate projects. Uh, we tap black and brown leaders who wanna support the search, the fundraising, the acquisition and the long-term asset management of those land and housing acquisitions. And we give it to them because we know that Oaklanders know what Oaklanders need. And then with us with Arbor Room, I'm just so excited to, to get the keys and to be able to vision with folks in the space, um, you know, and seeing the, the legacy Oaklanders who have memories of Esther and of being in that space, being able to come and remake it into their own space so we can, you know, help make that vision a reality. That's really what we're doing here. So the minimum investment is a thousand dollars share, but we actually let people pay it off with a payment plan. So I think our, you know, our minimum invested to date is like a hundred dollars per person. Anyone in California and now in 12 other states can buy a share in EBPREC or more shares um, at $1,000. And those shares go into our general fund, which we invest in various projects like, um, like Esther's Over Room, which is you know, a mix of commercial and residential um, property. And you know, those investments um, really make it possible for us to keep the properties affordable 
uh, and community owned. So it's, it allows folks to take their money out of Wall Street or out of the bank and invest it in the community. We are reviving the historic asset Esther's Orbit Room under the name the Esther's Orbit Room Cultural Revival Project. Um, we're bringing to market uh, because of the impact dollars that you yourself have invested in this vision. We're bringing to market four commercial footprints at 50% of market rate, a cafe, a bar, a performance venue, a fine arts gallery, a movement arts gallery, and um, we're trying to figure out how to create a resource for the kids too because we're using Esther's as the jump off point to reground a community into the West Oakland corridor. And Esther's is the first step in the acquisitions in the flats of West Oakland. And it is the pilot project of our $50 million land and housing acquisition fund. Invest today. Yeah, so that's the... Uh... That was a video from our Mayday member meeting last year, which was our, our first like outdoor meeting, first in-person meeting during COVID. So we did it outdoors at Liberation Park in East Oakland. Um, and we ended up closing escrow on Esther's uh, in October, September 30th, 2021. Um, and so we've been walking through the space. We're about to hire an architect. We've been planning. We've been hosting some community engagements. Um, figuring out, yeah, what the building needs. It's been closed for about 10 years. Um, and it's really our first step uh, looking at this whole corridor. Um, you can see this, this map at the bottom right of this image here that we created with uh, some students from CCA in San Francisco, some architecture students um, who are interested in, in the work that we're doing as well. Um, so identifying other potential spots for impact along this corridor. You know, there's a lot of development, uh, market rate development slated for this corridor, which used to be a historic black business district, was then decimated by, you know, uh, city neglects by eminent domain to build the post office, to build the BART, to build the Cypress Freeway, which then came down. Um, so it's it's a really interesting hot spot right now for gentrification and displacement um, and a big opportunity for us to step in and uh, get involved before that, that happens. Um, yeah, so it, it was a $1.5 million acquisition. We're looking at a 2 million, maybe a little more dollar rehabilitation and hopefully launching um, like opening in about two years. Um, but in the meanwhile, you know, we have the space, out, outdoor space. There's a big vacant lot in the backyard where we can gather and have parties and events and some things that we can do inside as well. So yeah, that's the Sorbet Room project. Any questions about our projects? before we jump into membership? No, I, I love the project. Like I said, I'm from West Oakland, so I'm, I know the deeply rooted history, especially mm. with the eminent domain, and just the, the bullshit they did to the people there. Like, oh, we'll give you jobs. Mm -hmm. and, and then like broke their houses down, removed them and then didn't even build the post office for 10 years in between mm. time. Like, oh, wow, I didn't know that. Yes, so that eminent domain happened and then the post office didn't even begin to be built until 10 years later. And they promised jobs to the people that were removed from there, you know? Wow. Oh, don't worry, well, you'll be the first one for these jobs and then 10 years right. later, yeah. yeah. So I, I love it. I love this space. Like I've always had a connection to Esther's. Like mm. I know the jazz history and like, it's just so dope. It's like mm. what you guys are doing is great. I love it. Like, love it. So yeah, you mm. can continue yeah. to the membership. <laughs> thing. Well, and I'll, I'll say um, we're still looking for our, you know, operators. We've got a lot of folks who've expressed interest, but over the next, the next, you know, six months, we're hoping to figure out who's gonna be working in a space like full-time. There's gonna be there's space for a bar and a restaurant, a performance venue, a cafe, a healing arts gallery, some mixed mixed use rooms. So, um, and we're also gonna start having sort of regular office hours at this space, maybe like Fridays starting um, starting next month. So if you're interested I in- I love by, it. No, out. I am definitely in connecting in other ways because I'm really into financial empowerment. I worked with mm. the Oakland Housing Authority for six years. So mm. like housing, like it touches everything. I've met uh, Nooney with City Slickers years ago when they first started yeah, cool. up running, but I definitely want to participate in multiple facets. So awesome. Yeah. All right. Exciting. 
All right, so we're talking about membership, but a little bit about like who the players are in real estate first um, to sort of help figure out where our members fit in. So the way that extractive capitalist real estate works um, is you know, simplified in the following chart where you've got a bank here who funds the landlord. Um, and this is an image of a criminal landlord, Steve Croman from New York, um, where these you know, landlords will purchase and manage property. Um, and I'll say not, not every mom and pop landlord is a villain, but in this, in this story we're telling, right? This is the, the bad version of landlord. Um, they purchase and manage a property. Um, and on the other side of the equation, we the people are the tenants who pay rent to live in those properties, right? In Oakland, over 65% of people are tenants, not owners, uh, particularly skewed towards black and brown people, right? So the money is flowing from the tenants on a monthly basis into these properties. And that is getting uh, then diverted as equity and profits to the landlord, and then as profit to the bank in the form of their interest that they're receiving. So this is a one way cash flow situation, right? Where the property is owned by the landlord who gets to liquidate it when they want to sell it. And all the monthly cash flows are going from the tenants into the landlord and the bank's pockets, right? So this is, we talk about extract, extraction of wealth through real estate. This is really a one-way diagram that we're talking about here. Um, and now the way re, EBPREC is reimagining this is we're getting rid of the landlord. We're saying we can actually purchase and manage our own properties. In order to fund that, we're, we can go to the bank if needed, and we've gotten some loans from foundations. We haven't actually worked with the bank yet. Um, but we, the people, can also fund the cooperative ourselves. So that's why we're selling shares. And we have over 300 investor owners to date who have bought shares in the cooperative to help um, fund the cooperative to the tune of over one and a half million dollars. Um, now, some of we, the people, can also become resident owners. Not everybody who invests gets to live at a property, right? Um, it takes a lot of investors to, to raise the money. But we do have resident owners who get to they still contribute financially, uh, but they get to live in and cooperatively steward the properties that EBPREC purchases and manages collectively with them, right? Manage or steward are sort of words that we're, we're merging because we really see it as stewardship. Um, and then so we've got cash flow coming in both of these directions. And the monthly payments that the resident owners are making, they actually get to build some equity uh, from the property. Some dividends are given to our investor owners. And the cooperative also gets to build some equity in the property um, so that we're sharing the wealth both to the individuals and to the collective. Um, and then any surplus that comes on top of that, any surplus from the, the residents goes directly back to those residents. Um, so if you're paying more than it actually costs to maintain your property on a monthly basis, at the end of the year, EBPREC does the math. Um, and that surplus, which would previously be profit for the landlord, that actually gets put into a resident uh, surplus account which can be then used to cover other you know, future costs from the property, or it can actually go back to the resident in the form of cash um, once those, if those residents ever decide to leave, or if, it, uh, if a lot of money is saved up into the account and it reaches a certain threshold, we'll actually make cash payments to those residents each year. So this is how we're transforming um, the sort of the structures around how real estate works, right? So there's no, there's no motive anymore to maximize the rent to extract money from these residents. Um, so how does that sh show up as our members, right? We have four types of members, like I mentioned earlier, staff owners, investor owners, community owners, and resident owners. Um, the numbers don't mean anything like one through four. There's, there's no order to these. Um, they sort of line up this way where the resident and community owners are the consumers, uh, the staff are the worker owners, and the investors um, are part of the investor cooperative structure. Um, but in more detail, um, so staff owners, um, we currently have four staff owners and three candidates. Um, after a year, the candidates can become staff owners as well. It's sort of a, a year get to know you period, make sure that everything aligns. Um, and through our day-to-day -day work, staff makes most of the day-to-day -day decisions about the cooperative, right? Not all of our members have time to read all the documents and be involved. I barely have time to, to <laughs> uh, do everything that needs to be done. So um, yeah, the staff owners are really moving forward the day-to-day -day operations. And we're really, our bylaws define us as staff trustees. So we take on a lot of the responsibility that a board traditionally takes on. Whereas EBPREX board plays more of an oversight role. And we do have uh, board elections coming up. We have a couple spots open. So if you're interested in nominating or being on the board, uh, feel free to reach out. Um, we also have, so our investor owners, like I mentioned, um, we used to only sell one share per person, but in 2020, we qualified for a 
direct public offering, a DPO with the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission. Um, so now we can raise up to $74 million uh, this year. Uh, we've, we've only raised about 1.5 million. So we're not, you know, we're not expecting to raise that uh, 40, 74 million this year, but um, it's really increased our capacity to raise money. And we're selling shares in all these states. Um, I think a couple more too, it's been updated on our website. You can read our full offering circular at evprec.org slash offering. Um, this has like the detailed information and all the risks and things that we've shared with the SEC. You can complete the investor owner agreement online. It's a minimum thousand dollars per share. There is a payment plan available um, and it's a minimum five-year investment. So you can ask for your money back after five years. Uh, plus you were targeting a 1.5% annual dividend that's declared each year by our board. They get to decide how much and when to declare dividends, but the target is one and a half percent per year. Um, so this helps us raise the money to, to like put, put the nest egg in our projects, right? That like 20% down, so to speak. Um, then we've also got community owners. So community owners are specifically, or ownership is specifically for folks in uh, the East Bay, uh, self-defined, right? If you're rooted here, whether you live here, you work here, you used to live here, you've got family here. Um, and it's really easy to become a community owner. You can sign up online. Um, there's a form you can fill out there. Join, uh, attend this orientation or, or watch it online um, and then contribute your dues, which could be a $10, a year, a month, or a week. So money really shouldn't be the issue. We can even waive the dues if it's too much. Um, and then participate, right? We just You just got to stay a little bit active. I think the requirement is like two or three events or meetings per year to come to. And um, we have fun events. So if you want to come to the meetings, you can. If you want to come to the parties, you can do that too, um, to just show up and make sure that you, you know a little bit about what's going on. Um, and these folks can join our you know, monthly community owner circles where we, we share updates, we make decisions together, we, and they can actually bring proposals to the cooperative, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But I wanted to know, we also have subsidies available, particularly for BIPOC artists living in East or West Oakland. We actually have a, um, a form, it's kind of hard to share on our website, so I'll share it in the chat here. If you or other folks you know are interested, um, this could be a subsidy for the investor owner share and the community owner share. So really to bring in uh, folks on the front line here who might not see themselves as like financial investors to say, hey, you can actually own a, a an equity share in the cooperative as well. Um, finally, we've got resident owners. Anyone who occupies as a primary place of work or residence um, can be named in a resident share agreement. And folks as young as 12, so you don't even have to be paying. You could just be living in one of our properties um, and you'll be able to participate in the collective decision-making process. Um, and in terms of like how these pieces fit together, we just finalized a owner group process um, back in February at our last community owner circle, we voted to approve this. Um, and it's a vehicle for members to create like groups within EBPREC that can then um, work towards elements within our mission and bring uh, proposals to the cooperative, which could be a property acquisition or could be you know, anything else. It could be a petition they wanna sign, it could be, um, you know, get creative with it. It could be a program that they want to run out of one of our offices, um, but a way for to empower our members to actually like organize within outside of what staff has capacity to do. Um, so this is an example of like a little flow, right? If you're interested in getting to property acquisition, how does that look like in EVPREC? Um, first, you might join as a community owner, right? Easiest way to get involved. Then you might join or create an owner group, right? Um, and then through that owner group, you could actually propose a project or an acquisition. Um, staff can give a lot more time and energy to working with owner groups than to working with you know, other folks who reach out and like ask for support because those owner groups are really, that's our structure where we're trying to, to facilitate that uh, deep involvement and, and um, building together. Um, and this is the proposal that we just passed. I'll just show it to you. Um, it's available on our shared Google Drive with all of our owners. Um, so it's a really simple agreement, right? Just we created this operating agreement to say, okay, who's in the group? What is your mission? Um, who's your coordinator? So we have a point of contact. And then there's a, a series of um, policies that owner groups are agreeing to. Like they're making a quarterly bulletin to share what they're doing with the rest of the cooperative. Um, they have a decision-making process. This is the proposal process where they can bring proposals to the cooperative. 
Um, so we, again, we just passed this process and we're sort of piloting it, um, but inviting our members to form these groups and um, carry forward their own initiatives. Um, and then this is a little visualization of the cooperative, right? With the staff collective in the middle, we have the Prince Street house, we have Esther's Orbit Room, we have Co-op 789, and then we might have other owner groups that are, or emerging owner groups that are then going to lead to other future projects. Um, and here's just a little like, okay, stepping back um, to this perspective of okay, challenges and benefits of cooperation. You know, cooperation isn't our typical structure of organizing ourselves. Um, it has challenges, right? It takes time and energy. You got to learn and unlearn a lot of our patterns. You got to dig deep through the interpersonal conflict that comes up when you're trying to deeply cooperate and generate consent with other folks. Um, and it takes a lot of personal growth. Um, but the benefits are community building, shared responsibility, preserving affordability in the community for each other, um, building together, having a say in what we do, um, and ultimately healing work I found is an unexpected benefit of of deep cooperation as we've got to do that personal growth and healing. So um, yeah, that's uh, that's the presentation for today. You can you know check us out at ebfrec.org. You can join our mailing list there. For Esther's Orbit Room inquiries, you can reach out to me. Um, for Deep East Oakland inquiries, here to stay at ebfrec.org. We also have a project intake form at ebfrec.org slash residents. If you've got a potential project, you can uh, fill out the form there and we'll follow up with you. So um, yeah, thank you so much for joining today. I'll stop the recording there.